Sketch a graph of the function f of x equals negative 4 times the quantity x minus 2 squared plus 5. Oh, there's no period there. Perfect. Be sure to label the vertex and find the intervals of increase, decrease, and any zeros. We'll talk about that last word. Looking at our function f of x and looking at the general form, what's h? And what's k? Positive 5 because it says plus k. So our vertex is at 2 comma 5. What does the negative 4 say to do to the graph? And the 4 makes it careful. If it's bigger, if it has an absolute value bigger than 1, it stretches it. So it's going to be thinner. So your final graph should look something like this. One more time, please. If it has an absolute value bigger than 1, it's a vertical stretch. So the absolute value of A would be positive 4, and that's bigger than 1. So it, looks, it should look thinner. Okay. Now that's a full-out sketch. We can improve this graph if we found intercepts and also zeros, but we'll get to that later on. Let's talk about the intervals of increase and decrease. Notice if your parabola opens down, the left-hand side of the graph is where it's increasing from left to right. Does everyone see that? Beep, so for what x values is that? Negative infinity to 2. Can I recover this? Did it. I'm a hero. Where is it decreasing? To an infinity. Notice that we don't need a picture to answer that question. Because where else do we see a 2 on this screen? The x coordinate and the vertex. So when it opens down, it increases, then decreases. If it opens up, it, and then, very good. Uh, even though I don't have it on here, let's talk about uh, intercepts. There's two types of intercepts. We have this magical thing called zeros. A zero is a number um, that makes the function equal to zero. So in notation, f of c equals 0. A number that makes the function equal to 0. You have two types of zeros. You have real zeros, and you have imaginary zeros. A number that makes, yes, a number that makes the function, that's okay, a number that makes the function equal to 0. So notationally, f of c equals 0. You have two types. You have real zeros, and you have imaginary zeros. Uh, real zeros have other names. They're also known as x-intercepts, and they're also known as roots. So x-intercepts, roots, zeros in real number land are all the same thing. But again, the word zero could also imply imaginary. I know that hurts. So for right now, and only right now, well, let's find the x-intercepts. To find the x-intercepts, you set the function equal to zero. Well, look at that. We have a quadratic equation, and we just got out of a section where we learned how to solve quadratic equations. Of your four methods, looking at this guy, which one should you use? What? You should use your square root property, because you have a perfect squared term. So if we subtracted 5 and divided by negative 4, you would have isolated your perfect square.
Now notice while solving, you're not going to get a very nice number. Yes. No. The reason being is if we had brought this negative 4x, negative 4 quantity d to the um, left, it'd become positive. And then by dividing by positive 4, we get positive 5 fourths. Also, another way to know by looking at the picture, if it did equal something negative, you'd have something squared equal something negative, which means you wouldn't have x-intercepts. And since we know the vertex is above and it opens down, it has to have x-intercepts. So uh, 2 plus the square root of 5 over 2 and then 2 minus the square root of 5 over 2 would be your x-intercepts. Let me see what those are approximately. I got uh, 0.88 and 3.11. So my graph is a little bit off. Um, it should have really gone through about this point here and this point here. So let me fix that real quick. Oh, so much better. Oh, I'll keep you black points. I've always loved you. There we go. That's good. So zero, a real zero, fancy talk for x-intercept. Another point we can find is your y-intercept. How do you find a y-intercept? Make x equal zero. Now notice this is an hk format. When you're in hk format, you sort of have to do a little bit of work. In the next format, you can look at it and know what your y-intercept is. So let's put in zero in for x. Based on the picture, what type of number should you expect? Positive or negative? Negative. Because, notice, uh, the leftmost x-intercept is still positive, so the graph's going to have to decrease to get the negative one. So I'll have negative 4 times 4. That's so many numbers. That's, uh, that, what, negative 11? Good. So that means that graph doesn't get, oh, we ran out of room. It's going to be like here-ish. It's right here, guys. There you go. Approximately. But again, as far as increase, decrease is concerned, it all matters about the vertex. And last little bit to talk about, even though also not on the screen. What's the domain? All real numbers. Remember, all polynomials have a domain of all reals. What's the range? Negative infinity to 5. Do we include the 5? Yeah. It's part of the y value. Where else is there a 5 on this board? The vertex. So knowing the coordinates of the vertex, Knowing if it opens up or down tells you increase, decrease, and range. You don't need to draw a picture.